Thank you, Lord. Are we ready? Are we ready to receive? Hallelujah. You know, I'll tell you, I'm going, as we're worshiping, I'm like, Lord, what am I going to (laughs) say? I got loads of stuff, but you know, ah, Jesus, glory to God. You know, as we were worshiping, I was thinking about Paul and Silas, you know, when they were in prison and they got beat and they were thrown back in their cell and they were worshiping the Lord. They were glorying in God. And, you know, the church has taken that scenario and said, you know, we can praise God and get a breakthrough. And that is so far from the truth. That is not the way. You see, this praise that they were experiencing, this joy that they were experiencing, was the result of a reality in their souls that was so far greater than the trouble that they were going through that they couldn't help but praise him, okay? And that caused the prison gate to open. But they didn't praise God to open the prison gates. They praised God because what they knew to be true was so good, and God was so worthy of their praise, they were in God's zone, And then the prison doors open. And the church has taken that scenario and made a formula out of it and said, now if we do what they did, we'll get the same results. That's not the way it works. And you know, the more I come into knowing what I know, the more I see that Christ in me interprets the word and it, it's just it's just so wonderful because you know the only true interpretation of the scripture is Jesus Christ okay and i've known that externally i know that if i look at the scripture and something doesn't it seems to be condemning or something I know I'm not looking at it right, and I need to look at it through Jesus Christ. But that's evolved to living Jesus Christ in me and him. I mean, I, this last couple of days has been just incredible because it's Christ in me that's opening up the word to me. And it's so delicious. And I am so enjoying it. You know, the scripture says in Romans 8 that the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto them. And I said to Jan, I said, you know, it's illogical. It is illogical to the carnal mind to understand the logic of God because you're not operating in the same mind. Amen? But when you have the mind of Christ, when the Holy Spirit, who is the mind of God, amen, who is the love of God, I mean, just like that scripture Rick said this morning, you know, in Romans 5, 5, it says the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. Now, I used to think that the Holy Ghost poured the love of God into me. Amen? No, he didn't pour something into me. He came into me. He is the love of God. Amen? And so it's like this thing is becoming so real. It's so beautiful. And I find that Christ, who is my life, is interpreting everything for me through
through him. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, you know, I want to talk about, well, my message is called Conformed or Transformed. Okay? You want to be conformed to this world or transformed by the renewing of your mind. And whenever I'm, what I'm going to be talking about is growing in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Growing up into maturity. And yet whenever I talk about this, I want to preface it with, you're already perfect. Okay? You're not trying to become. You already are. Okay? And what it is, growing up in him is growing in the knowledge of who you already are. Okay? You're not trying to become something you're not. You already are complete in him. Everything that Jesus Christ had in him when he walked this earth, you have in you. Now it's coming to know yourself. And the only way that you can come to know who you are is to come to know who Christ is. Because it's revealed, the re Jesus Christ, you have to understand that Jesus Christ was 100% God and 100% man. He was the express image of his Father in so much that he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But on the other hand, he was God's perfect man created in the image of God in his likeness. And so he is the revelation of who you are. And you can't, you know, I was saying to somebody the other day, I think it was Jan, that you remember in the 60s, people were saying, you know, I've got to go out and find myself. You can't find yourself except in the face of Jesus Christ. That, because that's who your true you is. Amen. So the scripture tells us in Hebrews 10, 14, that by one offering, he perfected forever them that are sanctified. And that is he, to make perfect, to fulfill, uh, to complete, to carry out through completely, to accomplish, finish, bring to an end. So you are complete in Christ through what he did. It's a, it's a finished deal. It's done. Okay? And Colossians 1.10 says that you're complete in him. Okay? Now, but Philemon, Philemon is one of my scriptures that I, I think I come to every time I talk because this is where it's at. It says that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. And let me put it in my words, the sharing, because that word communication, communication is koinonia it's fellowship it's sharing okay so the sharing of your faith which is a persuasion when you share your faith you are sharing what you have been persuaded of by Christ Jesus okay faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing so the more, and it's by the word of Christ. Now, the more you're persuaded, the more powerful your persuasion is. Amen? I mean, you ever talk to somebody, they really don't know who they are. Okay? And they're like, they got weak knees. You know? They're not bold. And then you got somebody who really knows who they are in Christ. And they're as bold as a lion. And they are, are perceived as being arrogant. Oh, boy, they really think they're something. Now, they know there's something in him. 
Okay, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence, okay? Christ gives us confidence. If you are puffed up in your own fleshly mind, you become arrogant. There's a big difference. Amen. And so it says, the sharing of your faith or what you're persuaded of may become powerful as you come to fully grasp all that you have in Christ. How can you fully grasp all that you have in Christ, that you've got God in you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in you, and you have a full grasp on that and not be confident? I mean, if God be for you, who can be against you? You see what I'm saying? When you know that you know that you know who you are, baby, you are bold. Amen. Hallelujah. So we become, our faith or our persuasion becomes powerful as we fully grasp all the we have in Christ, that everything that is in Christ is in you. Hallelujah. You know, Paul said in Philippians, and that's a whole nother message, but he said that I want to apprehend that for which I was apprehended. Okay? And we've heard of the word um, uh, to receive, lumbano. Okay? The scripture says in John 1, that Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. But to as many as received him or believed on him, he gave power to become the sons of God. Okay? And that word receive is lumbano, which means to grab a hold of in order to make use of. But in Philippians 3, Paul says, I apprehend, I want to apprehend that for which I was apprehended in Christ. And you know what that word is? Catalumbano. Catalumbano. It's a strength and form of lumbano, which means to totally get a hold of, to totally grasp the reason. What is the reason? You know, and religion has said, you know, you've got to find your calling. You know, you've got to find the reason why he apprehended you. Why he grabbed you. I'll tell you why he grabbed me. That I may know him. That I may know him and come to know him even as I'm known. What did Jesus say in John 17, 3? He, says, he said, the Father has given me power to give eternal life to as many as he's given to me. And this is eternal life. This is what it's all about. That they may know you the only true God, even Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So we've been called into the fellowship. Hallelujah. That we may come to know ourselves, even as God knows us. You know, when Jesus spoke to the disciples, and he said, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And Peter said, some say that thou art Elias or that prophet. He says, who do you say I am? He says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father. This was a cavore moment where God put his thoughts into Peter. And he said, you're the Christ. Only God could have revealed that to Peter. And he said back to Peter, he said, well, he said, Simon Barjona, Simon, son of Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed this. And then he says, thou art Peter. Piece of the rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hadassah. The gates of not seeing. Hallelujah. 
I don't want to have eyes that cannot see. I want to see. I want to see Jesus. He said the gates of hell, the gates of Hadass, the gates of not being able to see will never prevail against you again. And I give you the keys to the kingdom. The keys to the kingdom are the keys of authority. And the authority comes in knowing who you are. You're a child of God by God's doing and not your own. You're not something because of what you've done. You're not something because of what you possess. You are not something because of what you uh, look like. You're something because God says you're something and you agree with him. That's where your power comes from. You're a child of God and you've learned to agree with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'll tell you, this blew my mind. This I don't know when I got this a week or so ago. But in Romans 12, 1 and 2, I mean, boy, I'll tell you, I preached on this scripture so many times but I preached on it through a legalistic mind and it was like I never lived up to it and it is this I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And when I read this the other day, I couldn't get past, I beseech you therefore. Hello. You know, when you see the word therefore, you're supposed to see what it's there for. Do you know I had never seen the word therefore? 45 years of being saved. And studying the word of God, I had never seen the word therefore. And, and therefore is like uh, understanding what I just said. This is the conclusion. And so I went back to read what it was there for in the previous chapter. And I'm going to read it from the message. And this is really delicious. Enjoy it. Have you ever come on anything quite like this extravagant generosity of God? This deep, deep wisdom? It's way over our heads. We'll never figure it out. Is there anyone around who can explain God? Anyone smart enough to tell him what to do? Anyone who has done him such a huge favor that God has to ask his advice? Everything comes from him. Everything happens through him. Everything ends up in him. Always glory, always praise. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? I beseech you, therefore, I beseech. That word beseech is parakaleo. We're familiar with the word paraclete. Paraclete is uh, the comforter that comes alongside. He's our advocate. Okay? But this is Paul coming alongside us. And calling or surnaming us, okay? Calling out loud, inviting us. And it also means to comfort and exhort. So the way that I used to teach this scripture was totally wrong because it didn't comfort anybody. It didn't exhort anybody. It made people feel like they were a bag of dirt by the time I finished preaching because they just couldn't live up to the standard that I had raised for them. Amen. And so you, we have to see it through the mind of Christ. And so he says it means to console, 
to encourage, to strengthen. And he says, I beseech you, I'm doing this by the mercies of God. And that word by is, it denotes the channel of an act, okay? By, he's calling them by the mercies of God, okay? Paul is calling them through the mercy of God. And that word mercies is the bowels in which compassion resides. The heart of compassion. So Paul was hooked into the heart of the father. And the father was having his way in Paul. I love that. I love that. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Allow it to be so. Allow his mind to be in you that he can have full sway in your life. And that, see, God is good. God is good and he wants to do good all the time. And he's just looking for someone who he can have his way with. He wants to have his way with you. He wants to be able to show up on the stage of your life and do what he loves to do. Amen? And when we are in sync with him, when our mind is transformed to his mind, we're just dancing in the Holy Ghost. Amen? We're just fellowshipping God. And when he does what he does so good through you, you are the recipient of that blessing. Because you actually get to be a co-laborer with him. You're enjoying him doing his thing in you. And there ain't nothing like when Jesus does his thing in you. It's just, it's just what? That's the ultimate for God to have his way in our lives. Amen. Okay, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, if you read that through the carnal mind, you think you've got to be busy about getting holy, man. Okay? But that's not what he's saying. He's saying, present yourself, show yourself, stand there knowing who you are, knowing. It says in, in uh, Romans 6, 9, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Jesus lives unto God. Likewise, reckon... The same way, reckon ye yourselves are dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ. That's a living sacrifice. I'm alive unto God. I'm dead unto sin. And you know, me and Jen have been talking the last few days, and it's like, this is my logic. You know, your mind has to be totally transformed to the way God thinks so that his logic is your logic that when I see the word sin like I just read it you know I just read um, we're indeed dead to sin now when I read that most people will automatically think bad behavior I gotta die to that bad behavior I got my mind don't even go there my mind goes to the belief system that I am what I do. I'm dead to that, okay? I am so dead to that. I am not what I do. I am what God says, okay? I think it was last week, Pastor Rick said, you know, do you know how long it's been since I have felt condemnation? Do you know, that used to be my daily bread. Amen. Condemnation, just, you know, but the reason that I felt so condemned 
was because I had a carnal mind. I knew myself according to the flesh. But I don't know myself according to the flesh anymore. I only know myself according to what God says. For Paul said in 2 Corinthians, I think it's 5, he says, the love of Christ constrains me because I thus judge. It's a, there's a because there. You see, this love had him in a grasp because of something he knew. He says, if one man died, then all men are dead, that henceforth I know no man after the flesh, but after the spirit. I don't know myself after the flesh. I only know myself according to who God made little Beulah to be. And it's good. And it's good all the time. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so we're, I'm, I'm, I'm backing up this scripture where it says, Present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, holy and acceptable unto God. And you've got to get out of your mind. It's something you've got to do. It's something that you agree with. Because in Ephesians 1, 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will, he did all of this because he wanted to. To the praise and glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted. We're not trying to get accepted by God. We are getting our mind renewed to the fact we are accepted by God. And when you agree with God that you are holy and without blame before him in love and accepted in the beloved, then you will present yourself holy and acceptable. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, in Romans 10, 9, it says that if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. To confess with thy mouth. You know, is all that, that word confess mean? It's, it's homologeo. Homologeo. To say the same thing as another to agree with. But you know what? Religion has taken that scripture and said, you know, you got to come and confess all your sins. Amen. And ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. And then he will. It don't say that at all. It don't say nothing about that. It says to say the same thing as the Lord Jesus. Well, what did the Lord Jesus say? He said, Father, forgive them. Well, if Jesus said it, you know the Father did it. So where are we at going asking Jesus to forgive us? We ought to be saying, thank you, Lord, that you have forgiven us of all of our sins and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. To ask him to forgive you is not to say the same thing that Jesus has said. It's to contradict him. Hallelujah. And I love this part. Now, get into, my, get into the mind of Christ, okay? So you can really enjoy this. So we've really, we've really um, explained it. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, I used to think, legalistically, I used to think, it's the least you can do. I mean, he died for you. At least you can live for him. I hate those shirts 
that have Jesus on the front crucified. And it says, he died for you. And then on the back it said, the least you can do is live for him. That is condemnation. That is shame, shame, shame. That's the seed of the serpent. Amen. Now listen to what that word reasonable is. If it's logikos, which means pertaining to speech or speaking. It's agreeable with reason. Following reason. It's reasonable. It's the logical thing to do. Amen. When you know that he has made you accepted in the beloved and that you are blameless and holy, the logical thing to do is agree. Amen. Hallelujah. Which is your reasonable service. It's the logical thing to do to worship. Listen, if you get a hold of what I'm saying, baby, it'll, it'll make you a worshiper. Because you know what? You've, you've just come to find out that this scripture is not condemning you. It's not telling what you what you need to do. But this scripture is really telling you what Jesus Christ has done for you and in you. And when you come to get your mind renewed to what he's saying, you're like, oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing for me to do. I've entered into your rest. Wow, you are such a good, good father. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, and it brought me back, I think the last time I talked was uh, in John 4, where Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, you know. And he said to her, he says, the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And this must is no. It's, it's a necessity. i got to do it. i just got to do it. I know through the spirit he's revealed the truth. And i got to worship him because he's worthy of all praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. You get it? Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is a necessity. I need to. When I'm filled with the Spirit, and the Spirit conveys the truth of what Christ has done for me and in me, it evokes worship. I can't do anything but worship Him. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And that, you know, as I said that, I hear, I glory in nothing. Paul said in Galatians, I think it's six, he says, I glory in nothing except the cross of Jesus Christ, wherein I am crucified to the world, and the world is crucified to me. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about the wisdom of the serpent. He's crucified to that logic, okay? And that logic has no power on him anymore. And it's so funny because people that are still in the, the, the serpent's logic where they try to manipulate you through shame and guilt to get you to do what they want. This is the way of the devil. Amen. And you're free of it. And you're like, see my hand? Forget about it. You're not controlling me. Amen. I'm free. I know who I am. I, you see, you, I don't need your approval. See, the world is so used to needing approval that you just slide right into it. You just appease them by doing what they want because you so want their approval. But when you've got God's approval, you don't care what they say. You don't care what they think. I know who I am. I don't need your approval. I got God's approval. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the second verse in, in Romans 12, it says, And be not 
conformed to this world, this present age, the logic that is in this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? Now, in 1 John 5, 19, it says, And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. That's what Paul is talking about. And that word wickedness, paneros, is full of labors, annoyances, hardship, pressed and harassed by by neighbors. Well, sometimes we are pressed and harassed by neighbors. Amen. By labors. But you see, that's this world system. And if you have that logic of this world, then they can just manipulate you and pull your strings like a little puppet and you're going to respond. But when you've been crucified to this world and this logic of the world, you're a free man. You know, and you may, you may seem aloof. You may walk away and people may say, wow, they really think there's something. You know? Now, they don't like the fact that they can't manipulate you. Amen. You know, that's the way Jesus was. Jesus says, now is the hour of the prince of this world, and he's got nothing in me. He's got nothing in me. He can't pull my strings. He can't push my buttons. That's freedom. That's real freedom. When people can't press your buttons or get up your nose. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I will, brother. You know, that word conformed. Don't be conformed to this world. Now, listen to this. To conform oneself, one's mind and character, to another's pattern. To fashion oneself according to something else. You're doing it. This whole world is in that doing it. They're all trying to be conformed to something, the image of something that they see, and they're using all of their willpower and energy to try and become what they think people want. So it's all self-effort. It says, but contrary-wise, when you see but, it means contrary to what I just said, the opposite, be ye transformed by, remember that word by, it's denoting a channel of an act. So it's not by your self-effort. You're going to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Okay? And that word transformed is the uh, word metamorpho, okay? Which is the same as transfigure, transform, or change. You are going to be changed. You're not doing the changing. You see what I mean? To be conformed, you are trying to change yourself to be something else. But the word transformed, you're being transformed. A metamorphosis is going on in you as your mind is renewed to the truth of who you really are. Hallelujah. By the renewal, and that word renewal, listen to this, this is good. A renovation, complete change for the better. And it comes from the word To cause to grow up, to become new. You know, as your mind is being transformed by the Word of God, you are coming into your true identity. Hallelujah. And you see, as your mind comes into your true identity of who you really are, then it becomes to manifest in your life. But it's not you trying to change the way you are. It's God changing the way you think 
And when you change the way you think, it changes the way you behave. Hallelujah. It says, and you know, um, it also says uh, to grow up, to make new, new strength. I like that. New strength, new vigor. Because, listen, when I'm in the zone, I am like superwoman. I got energy like nobody's business. Amen. And that's not me. It's Christ in me. It's the power. It's the supernatural dunamis power of God. Hallelujah. And when that life is living in you, it's like, I always say this, it's like Clark Kent going into the phone booth and coming out Superman. Which one do you think he likes better? You think he likes feeling like Clark Kent or Superman? Ah, yeah, once you tasted. Once you tasted of this life, this supernatural life, oh, glory to God, you don't want to go back to natural. Amen. Hallelujah. It says to be changed into a new kind of life as opposed to the former corrupt state. And this is all by the renewing of your mind, just the way you think. And it reminded me of in Isaiah 40, 31, where it says, um, the, those that wait upon the Lord, kavor, that word kavor, to braid his thoughts together with your thoughts. That's what it means, okay? And I always, you know, I, I see that uh, guy that was thrown in the pit in the book of Jeremiah. He was a good guy. He was a little eunuch. Ebed, Ebed something, Ebed Lamech, I think his name may have been. Uh, but they, you know, and Jeremiah was thrown in the pit and they took rags and they put it around his armpits and they dragged him out of that pit. And when I can be, I could be in the pit. But when God causes his thoughts to come into my mind and I twist my thoughts together with his thoughts. He pulls me right up out of the miry clay. He puts my feet on a rock to stay. And I praise in my heart. Hallelujah. It's like, woo! He brought me out. Hallelujah. I didn't do nothing. I just allowed. Woo! Allow. Let this mind be in you. Allow this mind to be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Just let him do it, man. Just let him. Let him do it. Hallelujah. And it says, the young men will faint. Young men will faint. But they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with the wings of the eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. Hallelujah. This is the supernatural life that comes through the transformation of the mind, which is all God's doing. Amen. Look here in uh, Ephesians 4.22. It says that you put off con concerning the former conversation. That word conversation is lifestyle. You put off the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind that ye may put on the new man, which is after God created in righteousness and true holiness. It's not something you got to do. This is the new man. And the old man is put off and the new man is put on by the renewing of your mind. If you don't renew your mind to the truth of who you are, you are going to be acting like a turkey in the barnyard rather than flying like an eagle. Amen? And you know what? I mean, listen, even if we don't come to know who we really are, one day we're going to find out. One day we're going to find out, hey, guys, don't be so quick on that. He went late. I need uh, some extra minutes. Amen. Amen. He's not going to rip me off of my time. Hallelujah. I mean, do you like this or what? Are you enjoying this? I am really enjoying this. I mean, this is the answer, kids. 
Hallelujah. So it's, it's all a one-shot deal. You know, when you get your mind renewed, you know that you're dead to, the, to sin and alive to God. The old man is dead. You're not shadow boxing anymore. Amen. I'm alive to God. I'm the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now listen to this. This renewing of the mind is so important. In 2 Corinthians 3.12, it says, for it's talking about, it's talking about Moses and how Moses put a veil over his face so the children of Israel could not see what was going to be done away. It says, for if that which was done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which was to be abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. If you're reading Moses to see how you should live according to the law, you still got a veil over your heart. But when the heart turns to Christ, the veil is taken away, and you can see, okay? And it says... Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We're changed, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, in a glass, in a mirror. You're beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? You see yourself. You cannot, listen to me, kids. You cannot look in the mirror and see the glory of God. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's in you already. But for you to be able to see it, the veil's got to be taken off of your heart. Hallelujah. And then when you see the glory of the Lord, you're changed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. You see, when you're trying to conform yourself to this world because you've got this world's logic, you're trying to do it. It's all you, self-effort, glory, glory, glory. Oh, just look at me how wonderful I am. But when you have the veil taken away and you can see the glory of the Lord that God put in you from the beginning of time. Paul, um, David said, Who is man that thou art mindful of him? You crowned him with glory and honor. Every human being is crowned with glory and honor. But if they're living like the devil, it's because they still don't see. Is all they need is their eyes to be open to their true identity. If they can only see the glory that is in them, then they will be metamorphosed. Not by their doing, but by the Spirit of the Lord. And then you say, Oh, look at me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everything, everything in me is the grace of God. It's not my doing, it's his doing. And do you know, I'll finish with this, not that I want to. You know, that word metamorpho is only used four times in the scripture. Once in 2 Corinthians, what I just read, we're changed, metamorphosed. Romans 12, 2, we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. And twice in the Gospels, on the Mount of Transfiguration. Once in Mark 9, 2, and the other in Matthew 17. 
After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his remnant was as white as light. And I, you know, I made a video last week on this, but I, I asked the Lord, I don't get it, Lord, I don't get it. It's only used four times. How is this linked to transformed and changed? And then last Sunday morning, he gave it to me. Because I always knew that Peter, James, and John, it's in that order. Peter, stone. James, is Jacob, which is supplanter, would take by the heel. And John is Jehovah favored, it's grace. When, when they went up into the mount and the law, the stones were replaced by grace, they saw the glory. And the Lord said, Beulah, as long as you have a stony heart, as long as you have the law, you can't see the glory. But once the law is removed, you can see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I had so much more. You know, I'm so used to preaching for like an hour and a half. So maybe we'll get a bigger appetite, huh? Amen. Hallelujah. I like a full meal, you know. I like the whole nine yards. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, there was um, a statement that I made that I would just, by inspiration, only the wisdom of God and set us free from the wisdom of the world. If we do not see ourselves as God sees us, we will look with envy at the world and desire to be like those that are held in high esteem by their peers. But when you see that they are chasing after the wind. And satisfaction always seems beyond their grasp. You just snuggle down into the Father's great love for you and say, thanks be to God that always causes me to triumph. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know that last part where it says... Um, Ah, uh, be conformed to this one. Allow, yeah, that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. It means to allow, to allow. So the bottom line is, when our mind is transformed to be like his mind, and we see ourselves as he, he sees us, then there is nothing in us that fights. We've got the same mind. We want what he wants. And then he is allowed to show up on the stage of our life and do his thing. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? That's the life. That's the life when there's nothing in me that fights God. Because this one thing I know, there ain't nobody can live like God. Amen? I mean, he's got the best life, right? I mean, this guy knows how to live, right? Wouldn't you like him to do it again in you? I mean, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what I want. Amen. Heavenly Father, you're just so wonderful. Lord, I could talk about you all day long. Hallelujah. And Father, we just, we take this bread in remembrance that, boy, did it cost you. It cost you to get this mind that is in you, in us. 
we take this bread, which is your body that was broken for us. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for this cup that represents your blood that was poured out for us. And Lord, you said, examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. Lord, I know I'm in the faith. I know I believe exactly like you believe about me. And you said, Lord, many people drink this cup of the Lord unworthily and drink damnation to their own body, not discerning the Lord's body. Lord, I know that your blood was poured out for me and everything is in your death, burial, and resurrection. My healing, amen. I receive healing through this cup. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I do discern your body, that it was for the full man, body, soul, and spirit. And I make use of it in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray that you would cause this word to come back. Keep coming back to our mind, Lord, and feeding us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, that you would increase every one of our hunger. Father, that we'd have a greater capacity, Lord, to feed on your word. In Jesus' name, amen.